You're listening to The John and Heidi Show. Now, featuring the wit and wisdom of Dan Ferris. Okay, dudes, let's walk this sucker. On Sunny 93.3. It's The John and Heidi Show bonus hour with Dan Ferris, brought to you in part by the Sioux Falls Job Fair. It's coming up next month. It'll be here before you know it, though. New year, new career. All the details at SiouxFallsJobFair.com. Dan, how you doing, man? Uh, doing all right. It looks like winter's here, like, for real now. Yeah, it's yeah. like real, real. Yeah. And does anybody Fold. else have, have a problem with this? Like, I'll tune in, like, the Weather Channel, whatever, whatever, and then it'll say, okay, current stats currently in your area, let's say it's 18. Yeah. Feels like yeah. six. Yeah, yeah. Then just say yeah. it's six. Well, then, yeah, right? Right. I don't understand that. Yeah, if I don't If it either. feels and like, then why is the temp this? feels like. It's right. just, oh, it's just so confusing. I don't even know why we bother to get out of bed anymore. <laughs> Well, I do because <sighs> everything else happens outside of the bed. You know. Who has birthdays today? Man, I just love this actor, this amazing individual, Denzel Washington. Oh, I do too. Who still to me is like 45, right? He's mm-hmm. just amazing. He's 67 today. Is he really? 67. Nice. Holy cats. Uh, Johnny's kid brother, Edgar Winter. Oh. Did Frankenstein, Free Ride, a couple of hits. Is that John's brother? Jonathan Winters? Tough to find two albinos out of Texas that uh, aren't related, John. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, I didn't know that. How am I supposed to know this stuff? 75 today. I saw Edgar Winter in concert a Did long, you? long time ago. In fact, huh. uh, Frankenstein had just become a big hit. It's on Minneapolis Auditorium. Listen to the rest of this bill. It was Edgar Winter. He was not the headliner. He was a warm-up act for Alice Cooper. But the third act, the one who opened the show, was Little Richard. Oh, wow. Yeah, Little Richard, Edgar Winter, and Alice huh. Cooper. Huh. Weird. Yeah. I mean, it's quite the, quite the it was there. Yeah, it was uh, quite quite the evening. Uh, <clears throat> Staniel Martin Lieber. You know him, you love him. It's Stan Lee. Oh, yeah. Marvel Comics. Okay. I gave the world Spider-Man, Iron Man, Thor, Hulk, the wow. Avengers, Fantastic Four, on and on. Holy cow. Pretty amazing. Let's see. It was 1849. Again, who writes this stuff down? Somebody did. man by the name of M. Jolly Bellin discovers dry cleaning. Like, oh. like a lot of discoveries, a total accident. He's just playing around his little shop there, accidentally uh, knocked over a lamp, which happened to be filled with oil and turpentine. Spilled it on his clothes and noticed the cleaning effect. Oh, nice. There's a lot of questions behind this story. It's like, Oil and turpentine, spills it on himself, notices the cleaning effect. Yeah, that yeah. doesn't make any sense. Take it off right away so you don't catch fire. <laughs> and then I have a third degree burns. And it was and it's like, okay. And everything back then was so dangerous. The lamp containing oil and turpentine. Let's light that on fire so we can see. Wow. Huh. It was uh, the year 2000. Retail giant Montgomery Ward announces it's going out of business after 128 years. Isn't that sad? That was very sad. Pretty uh, pretty incredible. I spent yeah. a lot of quality time at Montgomery Ward. And the catalog. Oh, yeah. I the love catalog the catalog. Before Christmas. Yeah. yeah. Circling what you wanted as a kid. Yeah, never got any of it. For me, it was Sears or JCPenney catalog. I didn't do the other one. It was 1981. This is pretty amazing. 1981, the first American test tube baby. Elizabeth Jordan Carr is born in Norfolk, Virginia. Oh. Wow. She's still doing fine. That's awesome. Back 2010, gave uh, birth to her first son, uh, Trevor. Oh, natural, by that the way. That is awesome. Nice. Yeah, I always think about that. It's like, okay, so it's like Mother's Day. What does she do? She like go to a hobby store and <laughs> cruise the chemistry set section or what? <laughs> Probably not. She had a mother that raised her, Dan. <laughs> I just have questions. That's all. Hey, I know. Hey, before you get there, I got to tell you why I was giggling over here. I found out <laughs> the Jonathan Winter, the Johnny Winters you were talking about. Yeah. I was talking yeah. about Jonathan Winters. Oh, the comedian. A whole different guy. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Whole different blood. That's why you're like, yeah, of course they're related. I'm like, well, how would I know that? And I googled it. I'm like, oh, those two. Yeah, they're related. Yeah, yeah. Ed, Edgar's like Jonathan Winters. Edgar's brother Johnny was was a, was a blues master. Yeah, All I right. played a I, played I a Gibson Firebird really really well. Pretty dumb right now. So you could say that. Yeah, I didn't know that's where you were going, or yeah. I would have mocked you endlessly. <laughs> I probably should have just kept that under my hat, but uh, well, I didn't. So they're related. Well, <laughs> what? All right. Thanks, Dan. Sure thing, man. <laughs> the John and Heidi Show bonus hour with Dan Ferris, brought to you in part by the Sioux Falls Job Fair. All the details at SiouxFallsJobFair.com.
In the past year, did you find yourself drinking more often? The stress of the last year had that effect on many people. If you're struggling to get back to normal and get the booze out of your daily routine, there is help. Timeforrehab.com would love to help you find the best option for you. There are many different programs. Timeforrehab.com will do our best to match you up with the program that will work best for your needs. Learn more at timeforrehab.com. We want to help. Timeforrehab.com. That's timeforrehab.com. And now Stuff Dan Finds Interesting. Yeah. It is time for Stuff Dan Finds Interesting. Dan, what do you find interesting on this Tuesday? Again, just in my search travels, tripped across stuff that will kill you. Oh. I thought it was interesting. We're going to focus on dogs, actually. Oh, wow. Oh, okay. Dogs. But first of all, did, and I really didn't know this, the top four deadliest animals on the planet. Oh, uh, mosquitoes are number one. Holy okay. cow. Oh, yeah, West Nile. I yeah, they're that. responsible for taking out like 750,000 people a year around the planet. Yeah. Holy cow. Swat as many of those puppies as you can. Uh, humans rank number two at <laughs> approximately 437,000 yeah. a year. Yeah. So we, we kill less kill people than souls. mosquitoes. Yeah, we do. Yeah, yep, yep, yeah. yep. At uh, number three are snakes, responsible okay. for about 100,000 deaths a year. Really? Dogs are at number four. Wow. 35,000 fatalities a year. Caused directly or indirectly by dogs, which Wowzers. I thought was kind of amazing. So you got to ask yourself, well, what are the deadliest breeds? Yeah, I'm glad are, you asked. What are they, Dan? Here's the top ten. Uh, the boxer. I love okay. boxers. They I only take out about seven people a year. Okay. This one surprised me. The Labrador Retriever hits oh, wow. the list number nine. Really? And then just uh, unknown breeds. Uh, about, yeah, yeah. Uh, Huskies at 13. Oh. Well, stop tying them to your sled. <laughs> Great big breed, the Mastiff. Oh, yeah. Bull big Mastiff, big. about uh, 14 people a year. The American Bulldog. Okay. 15, and then just uh, what they put as mixed breed, about 17. German Shepherds, responsible for 20 deaths a year. Oh, wow. Actually, uh, knew, a, uh, knew a kid, a Minneapolis family friend who got taken out by, yeah, Boy, a long time ago. That was horrifying. Yeah. The Rottweilers at number 45. Mm. As a former Rottweiler owner, I will say, mm, you have to effort to make that happen. And number one, also referred to as murder dog, the pit bull, almost 300 deaths a year. Holy cow. <clears> so <throat> from number one to number two was 300 down to 45? Yep. Yeah, the wow. pit bull, they, they, the stat comes in at 284 mm. Deaths a year in Rottweiler at uh, 45. Actually, my, my dog mom was Rottweiler German Shepherd mix. Okay. <clears throat> and he carried a pink blanket. <laughs> <laughs> not making that up. Holy cow. He carried a pink blanket. He was adorable. Nice. Absolutely adorable. And then uh, just real quickly, and just one listing here, uh, the world's most annoying dog is the one you two own. <laughs> You can often hear her in the background whining and whimpering. Yeah, and scratching. whatever breed that is. That's amazing. I got one nerve left and she's on it. Yeah, I, I, I'm right there with you, Dan. It's the John and Heidi Show bonus hour with Dan Ferris, brought to you in part by the Sioux Falls Job Fair. Again, all the details at SiouxFallsJobFair.com. I'm John with a fun comparison. Some puppies are purebred and they cost more. Others are more affordable. And then there are free puppies. Nobody really knows where they come from, but they're free. In the advertising world, it's like that too. There are some super expensive ways to advertise if you can afford it. And there are some free things you've probably tried, but those dogs rarely work. Radio is kind of like that middle puppy. Affordable, will snuggle with you, and hopefully not pee on the rug. Radio advertising. Super affordable, a great investment, and man's best friend. Try it and let BetterResultsAdvertising.com bring your message to life. Time now for your morning coffee break, brought to you by Kaladi's Bistro on the corner of 26th and Minnesota Avenue in Sioux Falls. Dan, what you got for us today? Uh, you know, the story broke about a week or so ago, but it's it's got some legs, man. Some things are going on with it. Uh, announced uh, City of Sioux Falls has got big plans for Phillips Avenue. Oh, yeah, yeah, you were talking okay. about that. A lot of it is infrastructure, things that need to be done okay. to keep the downtown area, you know, up and pumping. But a lot of it is cosmetic as well. Okay. Now, keep in mind, they're going to soften the, as it's written, soften the streetscape with greenery. Okay. Parking's going to change from parallel to angled. They already do that on Phillips. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I well, I know was, they do, like yeah, for yeah, a I fact. they do. Uh, they're also going to uh, add lights up and down the avenue, twinkle That's lights, cool. sparkly lights, whatever, and metal artistic framework to support 
large porch style swings. I saw that. That's going to take up some parking spaces. So I'm reading this and I'm like, okay. I mean, I've called City Hall. In fact, you guys were sitting here when I called City Hall. Yeah, you. I've got a city condemned abandoned house in my neighborhood. Yeah. Yeah. That's been sitting there boarded up for the better part of five years now. Yeah. And apparently nobody wants to take it down. Huh. I actually called City. I offered to remove that house myself. Yeah. <laughs> but apparently you can't do that. <laughs> so they're doing this. And what I thought was interesting about it is like, okay, I'm guessing everybody's behind this, whatever, whatever. It sounds absolutely lovely. I don't know. But then I tripped across the uh, city post to Facebook post on this late last week. And I was yeah. reading the comments. Oh, yeah. Not everybody's on board with it. Like 80% of them were just. Negative. Yeah, which yeah. kind of startled me. Well, and, and I, I read one where they were talking about those swings. They're like, yeah, those swings are beautiful until you have a homeless person sleeping on them. Then you're going to be complaining that they're sleeping on the swing that you provided. Well, who knows? Some of the comments included things like, and here comes more crony capitalism. Uh, and I think uh, my favorite was, so like a Liberace theme park then? Oh, I saw that <laughs> quote. I know who that was. I know that guy. Yeah, that was my favorite too. So yeah, again, as far as I saw, as far as the comments on, on, on this, yeah, it was not even a 50-50 split. It was, it was a it lot was, of angry people. Yeah, there, were a few, <laughs> there were a few bold, brave souls that said, this looks really cool. <laughs> well, it probably look, will look really good. Cool. Again... This city is filthy rich. I can't stress that enough. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, Mayor Paul orders Italian suits like he doesn't even, <laughs> he, doesn't even he doesn't even wear them. They're just stockpiled somewhere in a warehouse. I don't think that's accurate. And I don't begrudge this city anything, but yeah. somebody take that house down in my neighborhood. <laughs> that would be awesome. You condemned it. You know people who can make this happen. Yes, they do. So, you know, where are the priorities really? I exactly. always question that. So, fantastic. I, I agree completely. Uh, this is the John and Heidi Show bonus hour with Dan Ferris. And we got uh, some little changes coming in here in the next few days. So, uh, be listening for some of the stuff that we're going to adjust and move around and uh, this and that and uh, whatnot and uh, all of that. Coming up. <laughs> wow, here. that's. <laughs> oh, you couldn't be clear? any more clear, John. Is that clear? I just want to make sure that's clear. All right, coming up, I've got one of the comedians from the Snow Jam Comedy Fest. We'll be getting to that here in just a bit. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show Bonus Hour with Dan Ferris. Many new students sign up for credit cards that are not very good. Have a conversation about how to properly use credit so they don't learn this lesson the hard way. At BetterCreditCards.com, we have credit cards that offer different things for different people. Want one that offers points? We have those. Want a card to help you build credit? We have those too. BetterCreditCards.com is designed to help Help you get a better credit card. See if we can help you find a better credit card at bettercreditcards.com. Time now for a bright spot of news brought to you by Paul's Designer Showroom on Lake Lorraine in Sioux Falls. They can brighten any room with a beautiful light fixture. We're going to brighten your day right now with some positive news. The 6th Annual Snow Jam Comedy Festival is coming up next month, and we've got several fun comedians that we're going to be talking to between now and then. And today, we have Julie Weidman joining us. Julie, how are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. How about yourself? I am fantastic. We're excited to have you here in Sioux Falls for the Snow Jam Comedy Festival. Have you been to Sioux Falls or South Dakota? Dakota in the past? I have not. I'm very excited. So where are you from, Julie? I hail out of Los Angeles, California. Very cool. A little warmer there. And how long have you been performing comedy? Um, Probably total uh, seven years. I had been performing and then I took a break for a couple of years. I was writing something and then it just kind of got parlayed a little bit longer than uh, I had hoped. And I've been back since uh, 2018, towards the end of 2018. But getting up a lot more and a lot more dedicated to it than I was previously. Previously, I was doing a lot of other stuff going on, a lot of auditions and stuff. So it was not as much on the forefront for me as it currently is. Well, it's good to have you at the Snow Jam Comedy Festival. Have you done quite a few festivals like this? I have not done the Snow Jam, but I've done uh, Plano, Boston, like San Diego. I'm doing the Electric Comedy Festival in Utah. 
So I've done, yeah, quite a few. Well, I'm excited to have you in Sioux Falls, and we had a lot of people submit videos. And this year I was on the selection committee, over 250 videos, and you made the cut. You were one of the best of the best of the best. There's some very funny comics that didn't make the cut. There's only room for 30. So congrats on being one of the top 30 comedians, and we're excited to have you here in Sioux Falls. Yeah, it's awesome. That's what's difficult about comedy sometimes and things like festivals or lists and stuff because it's all subjective too and it's tough to be rejected from things and it, I'm just so lucky to be included and happy about that but I, I do understand you know I've definitely not gotten accepted to other festivals so you know it's it's an honor and I'm looking forward to it. Well we're excited to have you here. Now when people get a chance to see you perform is there somebody that you're going to maybe remind them of? Is there a comedian that you would say that your style is similar to this particular comedian? Huh that's a good question. Um not certain. I, I would say, um, you know, for lack of a better word, observational, but I also try to, within observational, include my own experience. So it's not just what I see, it's maybe why I see it from stories and characters or anecdotes from my life. Uh, anecdotes. Yeah, I don't know who I would say. It's like, I know, you know, I like a bunch of different comics, but I, I don't know who I would say. Well, let's start with that list. Who are some of your favorite comedians that you enjoy watching? My list of favorites would be, it's kind of a diverse group. I, I love Cat Williams. Some of his specials are, are my favorite. Bertie Mac. I love Seinfeld. Some of his earlier specials were some of my favorites. Stephen Wright. I saw him a couple of years ago in concert, which is great. Like him. Newer people, I definitely, you know, well, not newer, but relatively newer. Like Kig Nataro, uh, I really enjoy her. Margaret Cho. Sounds like we're on the same page. Many of those are some of my favorite comedians as well. Yeah. You know, Richard Pryor, of course. Absolutely agree with that as well. We're excited to have you come to Sioux Falls for Snow Jam Comedy Festival. If people listening would like to follow you, is there a place they can find you on social media? Absolutely. It's on all of the social media. I'm probably most active on Instagram, but trying to be more active on Twitter and Facebook. I'm, I'm there. Uh, on all of them, it's Julie Weidman, W-E-I-D-M-A-N-N. And there's some clips and stuff on there if people want to get an idea of what my comedy's like. Well, Julie, thank you so much for your time today. I appreciate it a bunch. Thank you so much and have a great rest of your day. I look forward to meeting you. Absolutely. I look forward to that as well. Again, the Snow Jam Comedy Festival, it'll be here before you know it. It's coming up January 19th, 20th, 21st, and 22nd. You can get tickets. You can get all the details at snowjamcomedyfest.com. Merry Christmas. Oh, you're not ready for that yet. How about Happy Halloween? At WeirdGiftOfTheDay.com, we help you get ready for all of the fun holidays throughout the year with funny, silly, and just plain weird gift ideas for your friends. If you have a friend who has a bizarre sense of humor, we have a gift idea for them. WeirdGiftOfTheDay.com posts a link to something that will make you smile each and every day. Whether you buy these weird gifts or not, it's worth checking out just for a smile. WeirdGiftOfTheDay.com. That's WeirdGiftOfTheDay.com. Time now for the newsiest news we do. It's time for local news with award-winning newscaster and radio extraordinaire, Dan Ferris. I'm I'm all out in sight of squaw. (laughs) I just like this story just just because. Let's uh, go over to Dauphin County, Pennsylvania, shall we? It uh, happened over the Christmas weekend. A couple celebrated their anniversary. All right. So what, Dan? Sarah and Daniel, great name. Yeah. Uh, Hefflinger, celebrating their anniversary, and uh, their friends, family, threw them a great big bash. And they celebrated uh, their love by just saying, hey, yeah, it's been okay. It's their 75th wedding That's anniversary. That's pretty great. 75 That's amazing. years. I love that. 75 years. They asked Daniel uh, what he thought, you know, the the secret to that uh, long-term union was. He says, you know, we've been lucky in in so many ways. We've got our health. We've really never had to struggle with one or the other being, you know, super ill and things like that. But uh, the big thing is to forgive and forget. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, Daniel, I know it's been 75 years, but Sarah hasn't forgotten anything. (laughs) (laughs) And it's coming, buddy. It's coming. You're going to be blindsided. (laughs) 
Remember that. Who wants to do some sports? I do. Oh, let's take a look. Show we brought to you by Hockey Headquarters. Bert and the crew with the absolute best in hockey, new and used, and figure skating, too. Uh, we're going to go back to 1975, historically speaking, because I watched this game, and I still have a problem with this game. This day, 75, NFC Divisional Playoff game. Dallas Cowboys, Minnesota Vikings. Vikings are going into the final minutes with the lead. They're going to go to the Super Bowl, but hang on. There's 32 seconds left on the clock. Dallas quarterback Roger Staubach falls back into the pocket, launches a 50-plus yard touchdown pass to Drew Pearson for the winning touchdown. That is the birth of what we call the Hail Mary pass. Ah. Unheard of until that day in NFL history. If you watch the tape, Drew Pearson pushed off one of our guys. It was actually pass interference. The refs didn't call it. That's why I still have a problem with that win. But here's the deal. <laughs> they start referring to it as the Hail Mary, right? Uh-huh. Okay, well, turns out only Catholic quarterbacks can use it, so the Cowboys would go on to lose to the Steelers in Super Bowl X. So there. <laughs> <laughs> know your religion. That's what I say. Amen, brother. From the sunny 93.3, you can look all this up. News desk, I'm Dan Ferris, or don't. Reminding you, if it's news, it's news to me. Some of that may have been made up. Thanks for watching. Good night, everybody. In the past year, did you find yourself drinking more often? The stress of the last year had that effect on many people. If you're struggling to get back to normal and get the booze out of your daily routine, there is help. Timeforrehab.com would love to help you find the best option for you. There are many different programs. Timeforrehab.com will do our best to match you up with the program that will work best for your needs. Learn more at timeforrehab.com. We want to help. Timeforrehab.com. That's timeforrehab.com. Here's your Market Beat Minute for Tuesday, December 28th, 2021. Santa Claus brought the market exactly what it wanted for Christmas, a new all-time high. The S&P 500 advanced more than 1% Monday to close near the high of the session and set a definitive new all-time high. This high breaks the market out of its recent consolidation and could add another 100 points or more to the index before the next level of major resistance is reached. This week's action could be a bit volatile due to the low volume and engagement. The biggest news of the week will come out Thursday when they release the Chicago PMI. The PMI is expected to advance from the previous month. The question is by how much. Regardless, the data will not likely move the market unless it's wildly out of sync with the consensus estimates. The market will be closed Friday in observance of the New Year holiday. You can get the inside track from Wall Street's brightest minds delivered directly to your inbox every day at marketbeatminute.com.